Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday in Lent. And I especially welcome the people who are watching us on live stream today. As I always say, you may not be here with us in person, but you are with us in spirit. And as always, we like to acknowledge important events in people's lives. So is there anybody celebrating a birthday today or this week or this upcoming week that they'd like to admit? Go ahead. And on Tuesday, happy birthday. She's hiding back there someplace. Anybody else? You want me to? Go ahead. Michelle's birthday, Michelle's birthday is this week. Happy birthday. <laughs> want me to say it? Want me to? Huh? Oh, your mom's is on Friday. Diane's on Friday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Don't worry, we already had talked about it before, so. Anybody else? Is there anybody celebrating an anniversary today or this week? I think very soon we're coming into anniversary season, aren't we? Not quite there yet. So today we're asked to hold these intentions and our thoughts and our prayers. For Carol Bartellamy, Carol Mills, Gina, so many others recovering from strokes. For their families, may healing and strength be theirs. For so many in our church and beyond who ask for God's healing. And today they include Mary, who's recovering from heart surgery. For Pete and Vincent. For baby Kendall and her parents. For Philip, Rob, and Jason. And for Jerry, Victor, Joel. For Julie, Fran, and Carmen. For Arlene, Tim, Leo, Rick, Greg Grease, Cherie, Justin, Anna, and Kristen. And finally, for Tom and for Father Doug, the captain's dad in hospice. And that little Elijah Vu, may he finally be found. And we hold these intentions, and the intentions we hold deep within our own hearts and present them before the Lord today. At this time, I ask you to please stand and greet your neighbor. Please face the center aisle and join us in singing our opening hymn, number 916, Christ Has Promised to Be Present, 916. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Gather together for our Eucharist once again this day. 
We gather to celebrate the only gift in life that matters, that our God is so deeply in love with us. And so the days of our salvation are fast approaching. That is the great Paschal Triduum, that is Easter. And so we pause yet again. We breathe, we just take a moment and look back at our week, look back perhaps at our season of Lent. What is it that we still need to heal, to find strength, to find comfort, to find healing? What good gift can we pray the Lord this day, this moment to fill us with? Let us do so now and ask God's mercy. Lord Jesus, we gather together here to hear your message of salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you bring hope to a world in need of your love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came into the world to show us the way to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated once more to be nourished by God's word. And for those who desire the text, it's on 1129. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know me. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. 
I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon again. So once upon a time, yep, I'm going to go there, there was this tree who loved this little boy very much. And every day, the little boy would come to the tree, and he would climb up the trunk and swing across the branches and eat the apples off the tree. Then he and the tree would play hide-and-seek with each other. And when he was done, when he was tired, he would sleep in the shade of the leaves. The boy loved the little tree, too, and the tree was very happy. But then the boy, he grew older and didn't come as often as he did before. And the tree was sad. But then one day, the boy did return, and the tree was very happy. And she said to him, Come up, climb my trunk, swing on the branches, eat some apples. And when you're tired, you can sleep in the shade. But the boy said to her, I don't have time for that. I want to have some fun. I want to buy things. I need some money. And he said to the tree, do you have any money? And she said, No, I don't have any money. But you can go up and pick some apples and sell them in the city. And he did. He climbed up the tree and picked some apples, and off he went, sell them in the city. And again, he was gone for a while. Sometime later, he came back, and she was very happy to see him. And she said, come, let's play. You can swing off my branches. And he said, no. I'm too busy for that. I want a house to keep me warm. I want a wife and children, and we need a house. Can you get me a house? Tree said, no, I can't do that for you. You see, the forest is my house. But what you can do is go up and cut off all my branches and build your own house. So the boy did that. He went up the tree, up the trunk, and cut off all her branches. And he left to build a house. The boy was gone for a long time. And the tree was sad. But then he came back again. And she whispered to him, I'm glad to see you. Let's play. The boy was older now. He was a man. He said, no, I can't do that. Very sad now. I wish I had a boat where I could just sail away and get out of here. Can you get me a boat? And the tree said, no, 
I can't get you a boat. But what you can do is cut down my trunk and make your own boat. And the boy who was now a man, that's what he did. He cut down her trunk, leaving just a stump. And he left and built his boat, and away he was gone. The tree was happy for him that he was able to do what he could, could with helping her. But then she became sad because he never came back for a long, long time. But then one day, he did. He came back. The boy who became a man was now a very old man. And the tree looked at him and said, I'm sorry, there's nothing I can give you. All I am now is just an old stump. And the old man looked at her and said, It's okay. I'm very sad now. I'm very alone. And I'm very old. All I want is a place to sit and rest. And the tree said to him, I'm a stump. I'm the perfect place that you can rest. And he did. He sat down. And the man and the tree were both very happy. The story I just told is called The Giving Tree. And it's a tale of unconditional love and sacrifice. And the reason I told that story today, because I think that story will help us understand our gospel reading maybe just a little bit better today. And what I mean by that is this. We just heard it. Jesus' time on earth is about to come to an end, isn't it? In spite of everything that he's done, the friendship, the miracles, the message of hope, the unconditional giving of himself. In spite of all of it, they're going to kill him. And he knows it. That's okay. Because it doesn't stop him, does it? Because he keeps pushing his message of salvation, doesn't he? Nothing is going to stop him. Nothing. In face of it all, he keeps going. And we just heard it. And here's what we just heard. We heard Jesus say this. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And he continues farther on in the Gospel when he says, I am troubled now. And yet, what should I say? Father, Save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Think about that. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. And there it is. Unconditional love and sacrifice. Just like that tree in our story unconditional love and sacrifice for all of us. For all of us. It's incredible, isn't it? What he did. But what does that mean for all of us here today? For me, I think when I read that story of the tree, along with that gospel reading, it really made me think about so many people I know in the world, that they give and they give and they give. They give their love, they give their time, they give of themselves. They're incredible people, they really are. And you would think by giving so much that they would just be kind of empty after all that, that they just had nothing left. But nothing, and I mean nothing, could be farther from the truth. Because those people are some of the most happy, satisfied people I've ever known in my lives. 
in my life. And why is that? It's because they discovered the secret, one of the true secrets of a fulfilling life. And you know what that is? That true fulfillment is about giving and not receiving. Say it again. True fulfillment of life is about giving of ourselves and not expecting anything in return. And I'll end with this. Next weekend, we too will see and experience Jesus and the unconditional love that he has shown for us. And it all starts next weekend on Palm Sunday. We watch his grand entrance into Jerusalem. And it continues throughout Holy Week, Thursday. Eucharist at the Holy Supper. Last Supper, I should say. The washing of his disciples' feet. And not just the washing of their feet, but his message to them and to us about how they need to live their lives, about how they are to go forth into the world after he's gone. Listen to what that message is. And then on Friday, we experience his agony and his death. But then it all comes together on the Saturday vigil, Easter Sunday, where Jesus is resurrected and shows us the path to eternal life. But it comes with an expectation, doesn't it? An expectation that we too are to give of ourselves, to give to each other, and to expect nothing in return. Because when we're able to do that and believe in Jesus, someday, someday, we too will come to see Jesus in person face to face. And when that day comes, can you just imagine seeing Jesus face to face? Can you? Let us rise, profess our faith once more, and proclaim, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. 
I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It is to you, good and gracious God, that your daughters and sons turn once more. We are amazed at the wonder of your love as we offer these humble prayers that we set before you now. For increased vocations to the diverse ministries which give life and abundance to the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For civil authorities who through prayer and meditation grow to value the enduring power of loving charity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For sincere willingness to turn from condemnation and to grow in charity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are dedicated to faith formation and for those with whom they share the treasures of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the faithful departed, for our deceased relatives and friends, and for all the intentions in our prayer request book, in particular today, for Bernice Krieger, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To you we turn once more, God of the heavens and the earth, the God of Jesus, such abundance, such grace, such generosity, such self-giving, to give your only Son that we might live. Help us truly to become like you in all things, to embrace your way of life, and to bring your way of life to transform a weary world, we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us all be seated yet again as our sacred altar table is clothed and prepared. Please join us in singing, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, 650, 650.
Let us rise and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify us by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, for you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, why you constantly offer pardon and call on us to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us, and though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation, and as we turn back to you in spirit, why you grant us hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all while we entrust ourselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts without end and sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest Hosanna Hosanna in the highest You are indeed holy, O Lord and from the world's very beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not even approach you, why you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross, but before his arms are outstretched between the heavens and the earth to become that lasting sign of your covenant, why he desired to celebrate Passover once more with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice, handed it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his second coming, we offer you, our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles the world to yourself. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as we partake of this one bread and one chalice, we may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until that hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of the heavens, together with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Thomas, and with all the saints, and yes, with our departed brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. And then, freed at last from every wound and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of the Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. 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 Let us rise, for it is at the Savior's command informed by his divine teaching that we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. And let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace.
We behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all unto everlasting life. Amen. Please join us in singing our communion hymn, number 785, I Has Not Seen, 785, verses 1, 2, and 3.
before we close this evening, just to share a few things with you. Um, again, Somalia, so that I can keep you up to date as to how our collection for Somalia, for the people there are going this Lenten season, um, $11,500. Um, and so that translates, if my math is right, uh, about 34, 35,000 so far. So it's incredible. So thank you so much. The tent is still there, uh, as and it will be there uh, until, um, until almost Easter. Bishop's Appeal, thank you so much. $29,000 um, toward our $45,000 goal. So thank you again um, for the gifts that you share, uh, that we all share together. Uh, also, don't forget, um, there's, you can sign up for the Easter egg hunt. Um, small sizes, kidlets and ankle biters can sign up. You have to translate that. Um, there's sign-up sheets, there's information in the bulletin, but there's sign-up sheets uh, over there by the welcome desk and then just bring back the sheet and put it by the teddy bear near the welcome desk. So put that there. So you can still have time to sign up grandchildren and kids for the Easter egg hunt. This, this coming Tuesday at 6.30 p.m., there will be Stations of the Cross in here. Stations of the Cross from Mary's point of view with music and reflection and art. So that will be 6.30 this Tuesday right here uh, in this space. So please come if you feel free and would like to share Stations of the Cross from a vantage point of art and from also the vantage point of Mary. Uh, powerful, powerful stations. Also, uh, just a brief announcement, our church, our church has changed banks. So if you are an ACH person that gives, um, we just want to make sure that you know that we now bank at Bank First and not United Credit Union. So one or two folks have had, for lack of a better way to put it, a double dip. So we want to make sure that you're aware of that, so, right? I'm pretty sure. So please know. Um, let us know if something happens. Please just, just tell me, tell someone, uh, and we will help you take care of that, okay? Just so you know. I want to make sure. Um, if you've had a child baptized this, in this past year, we invite you to take the little dove from the wall. Take the little dove home with you with your child's name as a beautiful keepsake. Okay, so please take the dove home with you uh, from the wall. And finally, as promised last weekend, it is Burrito Sunday, uh, and you can take, take them home, you can eat them here, you can do whatever you'd like, beef, chicken. Uh, I am not sure if they're going to have egg and sausage already today, but they will tomorrow morning. So again, Hispanic ministry, so if you like burritos, then I promise that they're not hot. Too hot. No, they're not. So I just want to make sure that you know that. So again, it's just sponsored by our Hispanic ministry here. They're homemade. They're not purchased anywhere. You can go to the hall and eat there, and they'll make one for you fresh the way you want it, okay? Beef, chicken, okay, and egg and sausage. All right, there you go. Are there young people ages 3 to 12 that would come sit at the step with me just for a moment? Mm -hmm. you, can sit, you can sit right in front of me if you want. Okay, what's the best gift you can give someone? This is going to be the simplest question I've ever asked you. What is the best gift you can give to someone? You have 30 seconds. What? Love. Beautiful. You answer the question. Little tokens are okay. They really are. But the best gift comes from your heart. The best gift is from your heart. Never ever think differently. The best gift is from your heart. And that's the gift that moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas appreciate and those who serve Jesus do. Okay, thanks for coming. Give from your heart, all right? Sacred Assembly, let us rise. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion. 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. We bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting we desire we may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless us all, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let us join together in this St. Michael prayer, which is found on the inside cover to our guests of the hymnal. The St. Michael prayer. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join us in singing a song to send us forth. Lord, throughout these 40 days, 518, 518.